Hey man, have you heard your much more than society gives you credit for? Do you know that you have an inheritance and a promise? What's up, I'm Bishop Rob. And I'm Bishop G.T. Leitner, and we're the host of the Voice of the Kings talk show. We're bringing the Voice of the King to a city near you. We want to hear your voice and know your story. You don't have to have a title, degree, you can be straight off the block. How you started is not how you're finished. There's still a king inside of you. If you'd like to be a part of the show, contact us. Hello everyone and welcome to the Voice of Kings talk show. I am your host, Bishop Robert E. Knight Jr., pastor and founder of Kingdom Shift Ministries. Located in the great city of Millersville, Georgia, I am excited. We're going to be talking today on Broken But Gifted. So at this time, we're going to have everyone introduce themselves and we're going to get right into it. Come on, Bishop. I'm Bishop Gregory Leitner from Hardyville, South Carolina, from the glorious Church of Jesus Christ. Hello, I'm Prophet Willie Frazier. Uh, associate Pastor at Kingdom Shift Ministries, where well, Bishop Knight is the leader. And I'm Bishop Ziad Lopez, right in Griffin, Georgia. Amen. Listen, so we're going to be talking today on broken but gifted. Yes. And what I love so much about being broken, when you're broken, God, it, what he's trying to do, he's trying to destroy everything that you think that you know about yourself, everything that has been imparted and implanted in you that is not anything that's supposed to help you towards your destiny because what God wants to do is he wants to get to the center, the core of who he designed you to be. So God will allow you to be broken. He'll allow you to feel like you're a misfit, that you don't uh, fit in with people. So let's dive in. Let's talk about being broken and gifted. Yes, broken but gifted. There is a lot of uh, men uh, who are gifted who feel like they cannot use their gift because of their brokenness. Brokenness from they're a childhood, brokenness from things that they have done, brokenness from feeling like they have disappointed God. Yeah. It is very difficult to have a gift from God and still struggle on the other hand. Right. Because now I have to figure out how do I balance my struggle and still feel gifted? How can I use my gift when my character has been scandalized? Oh how can I be effective in, in, in what God has given me? Right. And on one hand, I still am pulled by desires and, and things that, don't, that do not line up with the gift that God gave me. So it's a struggle to be bro broken and gifted. And many of us are broken and gifted. The Bible says the gifts of God are irrevocable. Oh, that wow. means the gift that's on your life cannot be removed from your life, right. but the enemy can make you feel like your gift is null and void. Oh my. So, uh, so many times you, you find people that are anointed and gifted and a lot of times the ones that are genuine and real, they don't want to be out in the front. They have, they struggle with self-esteem issues, different issues with dealing with identity. So let's talk about that. Being anointed, but you have identity issues. You're not really confident in who you are. And if you have issues that you've been dealing with, even as an adolescent, let's talk about that. You know, the Bible is <clears throat> full of men and women of God that uh, performed miracles, did great exploits. But one thing that Paul uh, said that I like, he said they were subject to like passions, right. just like uh, anybody. They were subject to like passions. Right. That means feelings of depression, right. Uh, right. Uh, of angry. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not, they weren't in Superman mode all the time. Right. Uh, the little misleading that I went into when I was younger was that, when nothing's supposed to, uh, you just 100% holy, you just uh, mm. pass every test, and you just wonderful 24-7. Uh, <laughs> but I begin to read the Word of God, and I begin to see, and you were saying uh, feelings of inadequacy. Yes. Uh, of course, Moses and uh, Jeremiah, they always put this, uh, well, I'm too young. Uh, I can't go speak for you because I'm too young. Moses was like, I can't talk. Uh, yes. Send somebody else. <laughs> right, right. Because he had that feeling that mm -hmm. they were inadequate. Right. Uh, uh, they weren't worthy. It, it's some, uh, so, and, you know, when Peter denied Christ, mm -hmm. uh, he felt like uh, he wasn't worthy to even speak of Jesus no more. Mm -hmm. right. And when Jesus sent the message, he said, tell my disciples and Peter. Right. Because, uh, specifically Peter, because he denied me. 
Right. Mm -hmm. I was standing right there. And he denied me, and and mm -hmm. he he felt like that excluded him from uh, presenting the gospel and telling right. the world about him. Mm -hmm. And God, Jesus specifically said, Peter, get get Peter, because well, he's still in that broken spot where he felt like he's not chosen and uh, he's he's inadequate. But I want him to represent me. Go get Peter. Oh, and and you got to realize that no matter what you're going through, no matter <laughs> what your uh, weakness, your inadequacy, if God called you, he called you. And uh, allow him to cover you. Let his grace, let his, uh, his uh, mercy cover you. Right. But yeah. you do what God uh, has called you to do. Right. And, and don't worry. God uh, will work with you. It's a process. And God will work with you in your weakness. He'll work with you. In your inadequacy, he'll work with everything. But your task is to obey. Right, right. And to uh, uh, push forward. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, uh, Bishop uh, Lopez, how does, how does God, what kind of process does God take us through when we are anointed but we feel inadequate? What are some things that God would do to, to let you know or to assure you that he's with you? Let's talk about that. God, God has a way of showing you signs and giving you little hints right. uh, and letting you know that he's still with you, letting you know that you're still anointed. Um, a lot of people don't understand is, you know, uh, we're like olives. And um, yeah, olives are good for salads and all that stuff, but right. um, God's use for the olive has always been oil. Right. Mm -hmm. And in order to get oil from the olive, the olive has to be crushed. Right. And, you know, uh, Across the waters, they put the olive and they put them in on a like a stone mill. Right. And they back in the day they used to hook up a donkey or a bull or whatever to it and had them walk around. And the olive would have to go through a crushing process, a crushing right. process, a crushing process. Right. And um, they were getting, they wanted the oil that was in the olive. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know the oil represents the anointing of God. Yes. And yes. so a lot of times there are a lot of gifted people that are crushed. Right. There are a lot of gifted people that um, shine in the forefront, but when they step back into the background, mm -hmm. they're in pieces. Oh, my. Jesus. And a lot of people don't like to be honest right. with themselves, with God, and with anybody else. Mm -hmm. And like uh, Prophet said, you know, when we grew up in church, we never saw the issues. We never saw the problems. We never saw the real life of the people that we looked up to or we served under. Right. They always made it look like they never went through anything. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The time that we're living in now, the millennials and the younger generation, they ain't going for all that. That's right. They want to know what have you been through? Right. What have you gone through? Have you been broken? Right. And so now you, we, we have the transparency movement and I was being transparent before it was popular. Right. Now people try to silence me because I was being transparent. But you know, it's important that we need to share with people that just because you have been broken, a lot of people are broken because they've been abused, oh, their yes, parent, their yes. father was never in their mm -hmm. life, their mother was on drugs, and maybe their mother sold them for drugs, and you know, just different things that they've gone through in life, but God has anointed them to be a light and a voice uh, to the nations, or it, 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 even if you're not called to the nations, that doesn't mean that you're not gifted. That's right. You know, everybody has their own specific gifting for a mm -hmm. region or mm -hmm. a nation. Right. Mm -hmm. or uh, uh, different nations, you know. Mm -hmm. Like in Romans, the Bible says we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office. Mm -hmm. You know, just because you don't carry an office, you know, in the head doesn't mean that the right. feet aren't important. The body mm -hmm. needs every part of the body right. to operate mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, uh, uh, God has his own way of showing you that you are special. Right. You know, he'll send strangers your direction oh, right. yes, to let yes. you know, mm -hmm. I don't know you, but this just fell on my heart, and God wanted me to let you know that he's got you. Right. Or God wanted mm -hmm. me to let you know everything's going to be okay. Right. God wanted me to let you know right. that, you know, all is not lost. He'll That's send right. you signs or send strangers your way to let you know mm -hmm. that even though you're broken, right. there's a blessing coming your direction. Oh, my, my. You know, I've heard the cliche so many uh, years, God to turn a mess into a miracle. How can God take someone that's broken and catapult them to a place where they're walking in blessings, they're walking in healing miracles? Let's talk about that. Uh, a lot of times it is the broken place where God finds us 
and moves us from the brokenness to, to the point of miracle or to the point of the forefront. A lot of times the breaking of us, us being broken, is more about teaching us it's all about God and not about us and making us to the point where we reverence God enough to know, okay, I may sing and it may attract people, right. or I may be able to preach and it may bring the walls right. down, or I, I may have this wonderful gift, but the gift means nothing right. without God. That's so right. a lot of time God breaks us to teach us that. That's right. <clears throat> and I want to speak back on something Bishop Lopez was saying, talking about with the transparency. A lot of times because we were, we were not transparent, a lot of the people looked at the church as being hypocrites. Right. Well, you're a hypocrite, you're a hypocrite, you're a hypocrite, right. you're a hypocrite, you're a hypocrite, you're a hypocrite, you're right. a hypocrite because they had a, a secret struggle right. that they kept hidden away. Right. Though they were struggling with this thing, yes. they did not want to show it because they thought it would diminish the gift. Right. Your struggle does not diminish your gift. The oh struggle actually proves that you're gifted. How could you go through that? Jesus. and still yet have that gift right. on your life. My so it God. is the struggle that proves not only the gift that the hand of God is on your life. And mm -hmm. once we understand that, then we not, not, I'm not talking about sin and you're doing it boldly. Right. I'm talking about you can wear your scars as oh a God. badge, scar. not your sin, yeah. your scar. You can wear your scar. I've, I've been through this. Yeah. And instead of being ashamed of it, yeah. it oh is my God. badge right. to let you know that my gift survived it. Come on. Jesus, listen, listen. Come on. It's getting, it's getting excited. We're getting ready to go uh, to another level in this thing, but we got to take a quick break. Uh, you have been tuned in to the Voice of the Kings talk show, and we're talking about being broken but gifted, and we will be right back in a few minutes. Are you looking for a way to expand your ministry's reach and draw new members to your congregation? Queen Esther Mega Networks is your partner for Christian media outreach. Contact Dr. Janet Hogan Lamar today to learn how you can become a guest on one of our current programs or start your own worship and ministry series through Queen Esther Mega Networks. What's up? I'm Bishop Rob. And I'm Bishop G.T. Lightning. We're the hosts of the Voice of the Kings talk show. Listen, there was a time when I wanted to be a boss in the streets, but now I'm a king from the kingdom. It all started about... Wait a minute, maybe. wait a minute. We all have a journey. We all have a story of how we became kings. We're going to be talking about real life issues, sex, drugs, money. Listen, do us a favor. Go to YouTube, find Queen Esther Mega Networks, like, share, and follow. Build your brand and increase your bottom line with the Entrepreneur's Global Network. Contact us today. Hey man, have you heard you're much more than society gives you credit for? Do you know that you have an inheritance and a promise? What's up, I'm Bishop Rob. And I'm Bishop G.T. Lightner, and we're the host of the Voice of the Kings talk show. We're bringing the Voice of the King to a city near you. We want to hear your voice and know your story. You don't have to have a title, degree, you can be straight off the block. How you started is not how you'll finish. There's still a king inside of you. If you'd like to be a part of the show, contact us. Your generous one-time gift or monthly contribution keeps programs like this on the air and helps us to spread the gospel teachings of Jesus Christ. Please give what you can today and support the ministries that support us. Hello and welcome back to the Voice of the King Talk Show. We are talking about broken but gifted. And uh, Bishop Lightner, he had said some things uh, before we went to a break. One thing he said he was talking about the scars. I want to talk about scars. How do you get past the scars? The scars that remind you of the, the abuse that, we, that you've gone through, the hurt that you've gone through. How do you push past that in order to get to the place where you're fully operating in that gift that God has placed upon your life? For me, it was, it came in part. First of all, I had to learn how to strengthen myself. Uh, you know, when David was discouraged, he's, he encouraged himself. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another part to it, God will take you out of the situation that scarred you and then send new people uh, into your life right. that will not be your pity party, but they'll be your strength and they'll, uh, they'll uh, help with the uh, healing. Healing process. The healing process. 
because you can't do it alone. Right. God always sends somebody uh, uh, to help. And then the another part that he does is that the hell that you went through, the scars that you attained, it teaches you a lesson. And he'll put you in a situation mm. where you will use the things that you learned in the scarring process. Mm -hmm. He'll put you in a situation where you have to use those skills. Uh, so that, that third part is he puts you to work he, uh, so that you won't just sit there and just uh, uh, dwell on, oh, God, I've been through this. So he'll give you a task. He'll, your gift meets the need of somebody. Before God gave Joseph a wife, before he gave him a house, a money, he gave him a position. The Pharaoh lifted his head up and gave him a position and said, now, you over Israel, uh, the only greatest power other than you is me when I'm on this throne. He gave him a position so that he could use the gifting that God had placed in him, mm -hmm. gave him a, a, a job to do. And then after he gave him a wife. And then after he had the child, he said, God has caused me to forget my father's house, forget the pain that I went through. The pain started at home. Right. And it followed him all the way to, from the pit to the prison to the uh, Pharaoh's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, God gave him a job to do, a focus in ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what caused him to forget. Mm -hmm. oh, and then God will start adding uh, it, the blessing, the, the hell that you've been through, mm -hmm. you'll reap the harvest. Right. And the husband, I mean the wife and the children, mm -hmm. Joe said, I forgot my pain. <laughs> <laughs> The oh scar that what that I uh, endured, right. uh, mm -hmm. God caused me to forget it. Oh my, oh my! But you gotta stay occupied. Yes. Keep moving. You know, the other day I uh, I was just rambling through the house doing some things, and I hit my leg, and it it, it caused a scrape, and it started to bleed. Mm -hmm. I felt the pain, but you know it just like a little sting. But when the scab began to grow on it. That's when I really start to feel the pain mm -hmm. right. of that injury. So is it sometimes that when you're going through the healing process, is it more painful or harder than the actual wound? Let's talk about that, Bishop. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, y'all probably already know. Uh, I was raped at eight years old. And uh, it's a painful process trying to go from from the trauma to healing. Right. Um, a lot of people have a misconception or a misunderstanding of the process or it happens like that. Or if you right. pray, God will just snatch the pain away from right. you <laughs> and you'll forget about it and everything will be all right. The truth is I struggled for over 20, 28 years. Oh, wow. <clears throat> 28. Do some math, man. I'm getting old now. <laughs> but I struggled for over 20 years. Let's say the over 20 years of why did that happen to me, uh, how it messed me up emotionally, uh, how it messed me up mentally, uh, how it messed up my, my point of view uh, on manhood. And I didn't have anybody to come and tell me, you're still a man. Right. I didn't have anybody come and tell me, you know, other than my mother, everything's going to be okay. Right. God still loves you, you know, even when, when I went through my little stages in middle school and high school and you have people talking about you and uh, I'm not going to cry and people spreading rumors about you and especially in the church right. where right. you're supposed to have brothers right. that Color. love you unconditionally mm -hmm. and that know your story and will love you even harder and let you know we here, we have your back. Right. But it's something different when you have to go through a healing process by yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, some things you go through in life will isolate you. You know, uh, uh, a natural mechanism of mine, I will cut everybody off. I will put a wall up. I didn't trust nobody. Right. right. Sometimes I still don't. Y'all pray for me. But <clears throat> a lot of times through the healing process, a scab will be removed. Right. And it'll open up, reopen that wound, old wounds. That yeah. wound again. Yes. Right. And then another scab will have to form, and then mm. you start to create scar tissue. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't know about scar tissue, scar tissue hurts too. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. And sometimes it's the memories. It's the, you know, every year I used to relive it. 
Right. Every single year, and I would go into this depression stage, and I would be crying and have crying spells, and uh, just, they won't cry. And um, healing process is hard mm -hmm. when you go through something and you feel like nobody else understands. Right. Yes. Yes, sir. Broken yes, McGiffy. You know, I can sing, I can prophesy, I can preach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But nobody understands. Yes, sir. No matter how hard you try to make them understand. Yes. No matter how much you share your story, you'll still have people that'll judge you. Oh, my Jesus. That'll talk about you and say you're doing stuff that you're not doing. Right. And, you know, people wonder why I worship and why I praise the way I do. It was my therapy. Yes. Yes. Because when I went to the therapist and I went to the psychologist, you know, they told me it was okay for me to like Johnny. Yeah. They told me, you know, that's all right. It's okay. And I would say, but uh, my Bible yeah. told me uh, bye, bye. Mm -hmm. that you. God made Adam and Eve. He didn't make me mm -hmm. yes. to be with, you know, and the thing about it, don't nobody would talk about this kind of stuff. Right. Right. Don't nobody want to be honest and transparent right. and be like, I have, you know, issues. I deal with stuff every Jesus. day. And, you know, I'm a living example that you can make it. Right. I don't care if you've yes. been raped, molested, abused. Uh, I don't care if your daddy did it, your uncle did it, your mama did it, a cousin, a brother. Just because you have been broken, the gift on your life uh, yes. has caused you to survive. Jesus. God made you. He built you to make it through whatever you're going through. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give in. I used to get high every day, lace my weed with cocaine. Mm. I used to take pills just to deal with life. I used to hate waking up and all that. And, you know, yes, it hurts. It's going to hurt to heal. It's some things going to happen that's going to rehash those wounds. You know, memories will come back. You'd be watching a video, a movie, or having a simple conversation, mm -hmm. and thoughts will come back in your mind. The pain will resurface. But guess what? you got to keep it pressed in your spirit. That's Yes. That thing, I felt like it ruined my life. I felt like it stopped me in my tracks. I felt like nobody would love me. I would never get married. My ministry would never go nowhere. This thing would always be riding me on my back. Oh my. And I ain't going to cap. I ain't going to lie to nobody over here. Sometimes, some days, I still struggle. Some days, yes. I wake up and don't even want to get out the bed. Mm, some Jesus. days, I wake up and just don't understand, God, you could have mm -hmm. gave me or had me go oh through my. anything else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why did I have to go through this? Yes. And he'll say, well, why not? Yes. That's right. God knew that I would be strong enough to take what I had to go through. Yes. He knew that uh, my gift would help, not, not just my gift, but his grace. Yes, grace. You know, the Bible says that Apostle Paul, he said, I saw him three times, and he said nothing. Mm -hmm. But then he finally said, my grace is sufficient. sufficient. There's a thorn. Right. I have an issue. I have a struggle. I am broken. There's a yes. thorn in my flesh. Something, yes. a part of me is broken. Yes. God, can you remove this brokenness? And God saying, no, I can't take it away. I need that crack in your pottery. Yes. You know, people always say, oh, no, God don't want no cracks in your pottery. Mm -hmm. He's going to break it down. No, God wants you to show the scars mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. guess what? Your cracks and your scars show that you're a beautiful masterpiece mm -hmm. yes. that can still be used by the master. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Oh, my God. He can patch you up from the inside yes. and you can still have a scar on the outside. Yes. Yes. To show that even though they were broken, everybody wanted to throw you away and throw mm -hmm. you in the trash. Mm -hmm. I patched you up on the inside mm -hmm. so you're not bleeding out. Yes. Right. Yes. You're yes. not hemorrhaging. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. You're not bleeding out whatever I'm pouring into you. You're patched on the inside and uh, the outside oh. shows there's some unique uh, uh, special qualities about yes. you that yes. don't nobody don't else nobody has. Yes. 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 I'm sorry. I didn't mean to oh, take my. a damn oh, okay. oh, Praise God. Yeah. You know, you said so much, uh, but it was one thing that stood out for me and Bishop. Just want you to elaborate on this. What do you do when you're broken and you go to someone for help, but the person that's supposed to help you hurt takes you. advantage of you? They hurt you. They say, okay, you go to them, you say, I was molested as a child, and they use that as an opportunity to prey on you. What do you do when the help hurts you? It's difficult because a lot of times you, you have to make sure that you're running to the right help Yes. and not running to the person that's in the spotlight. Right. Sometimes your help is a person that nobody knows. Your help can be a, a, a bishop or a pastor that has one or two members right. and not 100 members. Right. You have to make sure that you're going to the right help because there are a lot of people who will pray on your wounds oh my. and then look at you wounded and because they have a vice of their own, right. seek to have you be their vice 
because they already know you're wounded. It, it, is, it is a very difficult thing mm. to be broken yes. and gifted. I, yes. I have a whole story that I, I have not shared, don't want to share it at this, this moment. Uh, I will share some of the stuff that happened to me when I was in high school. Uh, I didn't learn to read until I was 14. Mm -hmm. So I had a very tumultuous high school, um, middle school uh, uh, path. Uh, had a teacher that would, her pleasure was to write a word on the board, take a yardstick, and if you did not laugh, she would beat the kids in the room. Um, so it was, it was hard to even speak in front of people, yeah. especially educators. Now I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a high school teacher, and I find myself sometimes in high school talking to an educator that I know have a doctorate, and my words get twisted up in my mouth, blah, 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 right. blah, blah, blah. It's right. because of the old scar yes. being reopened. Yes. You know, and it's difficult when you're scarred. You have to deal with the scar tissue. And the truth is, some mornings when you're, when you're scarred, you don't feel like getting up. Right. Some moments when you, some days when you're scarred, you don't feel gifted. There right. are times we do not feel like we are all of that, that the anointing is. When you're preaching or mm. singing that's and right. the anointing is flowing, that's, that's different. That's but right. when you come down that's and right. the anointing is gone and you're by yourself yeah. in the middle of the night that's and it. it's just you that's and it. your scar and mm. your memory, that's, that's a whole different thing. That's, the that's when the enemy tells you, kill yourself. Now, I, I am a suicide suicide um, uh, su right. uh, um, uh, survivor. Yeah. I've survived suicide. I took a knife and tried to slit my wrist and the yeah. knife would not cut my wrist, mm. but would cut everything else. So I am a survivor. And you have to remember right. that you are a survivor. Yes. You survived it. Yes. It doesn't yes. matter what the devil threw at you. Yes. It doesn't matter how scarred you are. Yes. You survived it. And you survived it because God has a gift, a plan, and a destiny for yes. your life. Yes. It, it is it's difficult. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. But if you can just tell yourself, you survived it. Yes. God will get you through it. Yes. Oh, my, my, my. Yes. I tell you, I just, uh, I, it's, time is running out, <laughs> and it's getting so good. Mm. Listen, I've enjoyed everything thus far, but guess what? We will be back for part two of uh, talking on this topic. You have been tuned in to the Voices of the King talk show. We were talking about broken but gifted. We will be back with part two to continue to elaborate on this topic. God bless you. Come back and check us out. Ooh, good topic. Yeah, very good. What's up? I'm Bishop Raw. And I'm Bishop G.T. Lightner. We're the host of the Voice of the Kings talk show. Listen, there was a time when I wanted to be a boss in the streets, but now I'm a king from the kingdom. It all started about... Wait a minute, wait a minute. We all have a journey. We all have a story of how we became kings. We're going to be talking about real life issues, sex, drugs, money. Listen, do us a favor. Go to YouTube, find Queen Esther Mega Networks, like, share, and follow.